What's up guys, Dog Polk here, and we're back with another episode of Pograns. And today we're taking a look at a hand that Phil Hellmuth played on Poker After Dark the other day. Now this hand might not have quite the high stakes we've been seeing lately, but it does involve Phil Hellmuth being at risk in a cash game, and that's just good news for everybody. Let's go ahead and jump into the action. 3,100. Woo, yum, yum! Wow. This is raised, is re-raised by Hellmuth's ace-jack <sighs> suited. They're after you, Phil. And I doubt he's gonna be wow. going anywhere. When he's got the prospects of this sending Phil in could be space. the greatest hand of all time, depending on which way it goes. This hand? <laughs> well, I mean, because you've got Phil down a second to last hand of the night, right, right, who doesn't play much. Right. Our hand begins at $100, $200 blinds with Alan Keating coming in for a raise under the gun with Ace Nine Offsuit. Now, this is not a raise you want to make. You want to fold this hand. There are so many hands behind you that people can play that uh, are going to have you beat. You're going to get put into a lot of tough spots tough spots post flop your hand doesn't have good playability this is stuff we've just been through before the action folds to rob young in the button who looks down a rob young premium special button hand 9-4 suited and he does decide to make the call now over to the big blind phil helmy looks down at ace jack suited and this is a spot where you got a three bet and get some value i know you're out of position and so sometimes players can be tempted to just call but these guys can have so many different hands you got to put in a race here and get some value from these very loose players now, Phil Hummuth is no stranger to value. In fact, if it wasn't for luck, he'd win every time. If there weren't luck involved, I guess I'd win every one. He does decide to bump it up to 3,100, and I think this is a little bit small. Both players are very deep stacked behind him and are quite loose. I'd like to see this be a little bit larger. Something more like 3.5, 4,000, 4,500. Frankly, in games like this, don't be afraid to get a little aggressive on how much value you're going for. Anyway, once Phil Hummuth raises, the action's back over to Alan Keating. And this is one of the reasons why you don't want to raise hands like this. They have terrible playability, and you have no choice but to fold, which is why he does make the call, and now the action's over to Rob Young, who with this garbage suited hand has to fold as well. So he calls, and let's take a three-way flop. It's Keating, who is dominating Rob, and it comes ace, eight, five. The killer's in a nip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's your next movie, Jack. <laughs> Check. Check. Phil declines to see bet and that leaves Keating. <laughs> Firing with top pair and backdoor nut spades. All in. All in. And Helm is check piling on him. What? <laughs> is that an accident? <laughs> <laughs> I was just maybe the best. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's backdoor straight prospects for Keating. I didn't to have the nine of heart spades <laughs> in my hand. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I hate to double you up. It's the worst, but I love to stack you. How much is it? <laughs> 30. 24. The flop comes ace, eight, five. So both Phil Hummuth and Alan Keating have flopped top pair, but Phil Hummuth is in the lead with his better kicker. Now this is where Phil Hummuth sets a vintage Phil Hummuth move and sets the trap with a flop check. And I think every now and then this can be fine, but you need to mainly be betting the flop. When you have good hands, you should bet and build the pot. Both your opponents can have a variety of weak hands. We've seen Rob Young show up with hands like 7-4 suited or 6-4 suited, all kinds of stuff here that would call a bet. And so by betting, you get some value. If you check, they might try and take showdown value or try to improve. I think you mainly have to be pushing the action here with your value bet. Anyway, Phil does decide to set a trap, and now the action's over to Alan Keating. Here in this spot with the top pair, uh, it's a bit of an interesting situation. I, I could get behind a very small bet or a check. Uh, I think both options have a lot of merit. I could see it being more based around the strategy you're choosing to employ. If you're going to use a lot of small bets in the flop, this hand makes a lot of sense to do it with as well. You can have some weaker aces you might want to check. You do beat a few suited wheel aces that are possible for your opponent. And of course, there are a variety of hands either player could call you with that you're ahead of. However, I don't also mind mixing in a check every now and then, especially when you got trapped, you players like Phil Helmuth, who might be looking for a check raise to try and stack you. Anyway, he does decide to go ahead and bet about half pot here on the flop. I think this is a little bit too large. I'd like to see a smaller size, but I don't mind the decision. Now we're Rob Young, and this is why we don't play hands like 9 4 Diamonds. He has to fold because he has nothing, and the action's back over to Phil Helmuth. The question now becomes, what does Phil want to do here? And I think that you could either check call or check raise. And look, I know people get upset when I say you have multiple options. In fact, I saw this Reddit post the other day where someone tried to talk about what watching an average Doug Polk video was like. What it's like watching a Doug Polk video as someone new to the game. 
Hey guys, Doug Polk here. Didn't get my intro right. Today we're going to analyze a hand played recently at some stakes that you'll probably never play. Don't limp preflop. Now we're on to the flop. I don't mind checking, calling, raising, or folding here. Just throw some dice and make a decision based on the results. Also, never fold a boat except when they have a bigger boat. It's good advice right there. So we called the flop, which means we have to call the turn, and it's important to keep in mind we also have blockers to 156 different combinations of cards our opponents could have, so I like missing a check raise here every now and then. On to the river. Yeah, all options are still on the table here, but I think I just I like just shipping it regardless of what comes out. You probably block something somehow. I need to mix in some buffs every now and then to keep everyone guessing. Scream fold. That's it for today's analysis. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another one. And I know it might seem like this to a lot of players that are new to the game, but that's not what these hand analysis say at all. You only scream fold online, live. That's a pretty big tell. But back to the hand, the reason I tell you these things is because they're important and I want you to play well. If you're never willing to check call here with a stronger part of your range, your opponent's going to get to bluff you on later streets. If you're only going to check here when you have hands like kings, queens, or jacks, hands that can't stand the heat facing a bet and a jam, well, you're going to get bluffed and exploited in some of these situations unless you want to make some loose calls. By mixing in some stronger ones, you keep your opponents guessing, and you do have those calls that make it so your opponents won't want to bluff you. And that's what we try and teach you here. Make those decisions that prevent you from getting bluffed. But Phil Helmuth, he's not here for the check call the later streets. He set his trap, he's winning a big pot, and now he's going to spring it. Back over to Keating, tough spot here. He does have the back run up flush draw, which should change his uh, decision a little bit. Uh, but the problem here is what hands could Helmuth bluff with? Is Helmuth really going to 3-bet jack 10 suited from the big blind and check jam this flop? possible, but it's fairly unlikely. Now, Helmuth does have his blow-ups every now and then, but you have to think about how likely that is. Also, more importantly, what is the calling range for Kidding going to look like? Did he need to have Ace-9? Because he will have some stronger Aces here. Occasionally, have two pair or set. Does he need to have this hand in his call range? And the answer is it's probably close. And his action here is actually fairly close. I mean, he could argue that a part of his range should include this hand as a call. He could also argue that it's Phil Helmuth, he should, he's just not going to bluff you. And you have to weigh these decisions. So, let's see what he decides to do. Oh my gosh. We got one more hand after this. Didn't you re-raise pre yeah. How could my hand ever be good? I'm just hoping you have the king, queen, or king, jack of spades, but you don't even re-raise with king, queen, or king, jack of spades, so <laughs> I'm just wishing in one hand and throwing it away, huh? Is this why you're the greatest? <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it, right? <laughs> you get a jack loom like me to put the 30,000 in drawing a oh. dead. Phil is short for Philium, right? Helgi's statuesque. Ace Jack. It is. Why? Twice? Gets called. All right. Go. Oh, he's weird. Now we're playing a $67,600 pot. Yeah. You've got the flesh draw. Yeah, that was part of my thought. Did you say twice? Yep. As long as they're spades. Wow. Two times yeah. agreed upon here. Oh, the night. Yeah. Taking the last. We thought that before, I Mike. We thought that before. I did. I did. Cheating I have another feeling. Escaped he against would have been in the spot. Before, would have. Already once tonight. Not a skillful Can call, he do it again way. here? Rob, I'm telling you. Could we get drinks? One more round? Yeah. I could. Well, I'm sorry. Oh, my God. Look, a spade. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Helen goes from twice? three to 11 outs. Yeah, twice, twice, okay. uh, all right. I, uh, uh, I thought I was going to win them both. This is definitely, this is definitely Alan's board, and then they'll chop. There's a spade there. Who? No, it nope. isn't. Come on. Nope. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I want to that was yours. Uh, Spades yeah, around. That was pretty close. That was face. pretty close. Can I get another so glass of red wine? So on the free roll. Anybody want oh, anything? Oh, come on. Stop this. I'm good. Okay. Yes, you can glass of, One more glass of red. I would have had like the front row seat Thank for the whole show. You know? right. One more glass of red right. for me. 
They all have their drinks. Hard to get the out second time mm -hmm. round, isn't it? It's hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're all good. I know what you mean. Seven of spades. Oh my god. Oh. Six. Oh my god. Seven. Seven. Eating more Five. outs Nine. again. This seven. time seven. seven. God. Four side. Four mm. side. <laughs> Play Bach. <laughs> four side or three side, I guess. There you go. I think I prefer the four side. Three hundred and fifty people escape? holding their breath. No. Nice hand. Nice hand. Help there. Me. With the scoop. Cheers, cheers. Yeah, I got back I to you. you One, two, three. Yeah, three. Sorry, I just touched you deserve nothing. Yeah, I like to be touched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Phil Helmuth does secure the double up, which I'm sure everyone was rooting for because, you know, it's not fun when he busts. Nothing fun happens. Thank you guys for joining me today for Poker Hands. Remember to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you know when the next video comes out. We're doing them every day right here on the channel. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow.